This podcast contains explicit content. Dissecting the news one tangent at a time. This is Hardly Focused. Come on, people. Somebody order the London Symphony Orchestra. Possibly while high. Cypress Hill, I'm looking in your direction. Uh, do you know what's saying in the brain? We mostly know classical, but we could give it a shot. trying to get crazy with this thing? Don't you know I'm loco? This is Hardly Focus. We are Jack Gill and Nate Fillers. Hi. Um, What's going on, Nate? Oh, you know, we're uh, episode uh, 494. That's the sixth episodes away from 500 i uh spent our prep time doing all that math proud of you thank you That's great you're right we are very close to hitting episode 500 and uh quickly you can find us on your favorite podcast app or hardlyfocus.com or on youtube at hardlyfocus.com slash youtube and uh since we have been doing episodes of the ack and jack show which i'm happy to say i think uh of all the times i've tried resurrecting the ack and jack show uh i th- i think so far we've done the most episodes of this particular resurrection uh every, every time we did it in the past it would only we do like two or three episodes and then but we'd stop and this after doing that show for two years uh so uh we've already exceeded that in this current attempt at resurrecting the precursor to all the podcasts i've done since 2009 and uh i i blame the pandemic for that because it's so much easier to get together and do these things but yeah uh thanks pandemic (laughs) that will help us cheat the episode numbers and we'll get to episode 500 sooner rather than later so thanks for doing the the, uh math nate Oh, you're very welcome. I, I was like, I got to do this. It's it's my calling. <laughs> what you been up to? Um, uh, you know what? I'm gonna just start this off coming clean. Okay. Um, I, please don't judge me. I hope we can still be friends. Okay. Um, I started. This video TikTok. was one of many that. Sp- Sorry. <laughs> I clicked the wrong button. What? <laughs> uh, I started doing TikTok. I cut you off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, well, that, that was perfect. That was on. That was perfect. beautiful. You started I a mean, TikTok. Yeah. Oh Jesus. So Space Bear is now on TikTok. Uh, why? <laughs> so here's the thing. Here's the story. Um. It's got a really good algorithm. The algorithm. I can't. If I could say it algorithm, right. Algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I mean, I, I get it. It's it's what everyone's doing, and I know a lot of uh, institutions now are starting to take on a with their social media take on sort of a TikTok approach. Yeah. Because it's the thing. It's what the kids are into. Uh, and can you monetize on that? Um, I'm, I think so. I, I think it's, it's different than, um, how YouTube works, but I'm pretty sure you can. Okay. I haven't been monetized yet, so I don't really know how it works. Like where on YouTube, I had been monetized. Um, so I get how that works, but the, like the system that YouTube has just is so janky that like most, um, most creators are just jumping. Because they're just like, it's not helping out creators anymore. It's more focused on like network material or, you know, like reaction videos or, you know, things that it wants to be like. So basically it's whatever YouTube wants to be popular, decides to be popular. Whereas with TikTok, it has very uh, specific things that it looks for in videos to promote it. So... One is just like kind of like a bias and the other one's kind of more like it does a better job at showing your stuff to new eyes. So, and I actually proved it because um, 
I've only been on TikTok for like a couple of weeks or something and already surpassed my YouTube subscriber count. No shit. Congratulations. So it's just like, it just does the work for you. I mean, it's hard to to do, but I mean, it seems to be so far, fingers crossed, to be a lot more supportive in creators. And you're talking specifically about the subscriber count on the YouTube channel for Space Bear, right? Well, the YouTube Space Bear comedy. We just started. So, okay. So I have, for those of you unaware, um, I have two two um, channels. I have Space Bear and Space Bear comedy. Why do I have those? Is because Space Bear kind of got fucked over by like, being like a variety channel so like youtube doesn't know what to do with it so it just doesn't promote it so it kind of became a dead channel where we got to like 49 subscribers and just kind of stopped hmm. like just plateaued and um so it's because it broke so we started a new channel space bear comedy which is at like i want to say 2300 so it's still small, but I mean, considering we just put videos on TikTok and didn't do anything, right. we've already surpassed 2,300. So. Well, you can find the Space Bear Comedy channel at harleyfocus.com slash Nate. Uh, should I update that to um, no. No. the TikTok it's good. channel? Okay. Are you sure? I mean, you can do whatever you want. I didn't mean to make this all about me. Jesus, I'm sorry. I mean, that's I just, fine. I feel like I talk too much on this show, so <laughs> please. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> you don't. I do. Uh, every time I'm on, we're, whenever we're on the shows together, it's really funny because we're like, I talk too much. And you're like, I talk too much. I talked. We talked. So I was just like, let me just uh, tell you what's up. That's basically been what's up. It's cool. just doing stupid TikTok shit. You know How what? How about you? Well, you know what kind of irritates me is two things. One, in general, the song What's Up by Four Non Blondes. But two, that the, in the chorus, it's not what's up. It's it's what's going on? <laughs> and I think, if I'm not mistaken, they were trying to avoid a potential like copyright infringement. I think with, is it Marvin Gaye who did that song or like from the seventies? Yeah. The there's a, there's a song where like, prominently is like, yeah, what's going on. It, so they, they but somebody else covered it and that's the one that I know. Yeah. So they wanted to call it what's up or what's going on, but they couldn't. So then they call it what's up either way. A terrible song, either way, terrible song. Uh, yeah, so it's rough, uh, but I'm into, I'm on, I'm on a Liz fair kick. Nice. Uh, man, she a babe. Still a babe. And uh, interestingly enough, if you look up uh, music videos uh, of hers, or live performances, I should say, I think she was one of the final like, musical acts to perform before the pandemic really kicked into gear and everyone went into lockdown because you'll find uh, shows that she was doing around the 10th of March of 2020 and i think she was doing it like on a cruise it was one of those like cruise acts so they they were largely isolated but uh yeah it was just like i'm finding videos of her performing in like march 10th 2020 in front of a crowd and just and, and all the comments on the video are all pointing out like wow the 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 world had already ended at this point and liz was still going <laughs> <laughs> uh but the pandemic has actually got her to put out some of her uh, first new music in a very long time. So maybe I'll feature that in, a, I, in an upcoming Hardly Shuffled. I'm very interested to see what happens when things go back to normal, so to speak, normal, like with bands and stuff like that. Like, I just feel like we're going to see a lot of new stuff. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. That actually segues into a segment that we actually haven't I don't think we've done on Hardly Focus since we changed the name. This is from the Talk Radio Meltdown era, updated for the podcast under its new name, which, uh, as Nate brought up just a few minutes ago, we're coming up a month away from our first year anniversary is Hardly Focused in the 12th overall <laughs> as a podcast. I, I, we're getting to the point now where I just can't do math. It's just numbers at point. I, I mean, I prepared for the first part. I'm not, I'm <laughs> off math duties for the rest of the show. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Let's talk about what happened this week. 
It's been one week. Hardly Focus presents this weekend. Well, everything. That's one week. There are seven days in a week. I love you, filthy hobo. I forgot I made that. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. It's a classic. <laughs> Proud of you, Jack. <laughs> yeah. Good uh, work. Well, let's jump around a bit here. Um, so first, you know, we're, we're based out of Massachusetts and uh, where we were for a long time, one of the hardest hit states for the coronavirus pandemic. And there's also a lot of, uh, well, I guess it, it, the reaction to everything that Governor Charlie Baker has done has been very polarizing. I personally have no problem with it because I enjoy living and enjoy not being chronically ill. But there are people who are not happy with how he's handled the pandemic. Uh, and now we've got the vaccinations rolling out and people are upset about that, not only around here, but around, uh, you know, around the country. Uh, here is audio from... CBS Boston uh, about the reopening plan that's happening here in Massachusetts. Uh, as of tomorrow, today is the 28th of February. Uh, tomorrow, the 1st of March, is when the uh, phase, phase three, step two, or something like that goes into effect. We, we some, some crap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're lifting restrictions. Um, and then later in the month, on the 22nd, we're for the first time going into phase four, which actually lifts things even further. Uh, here is audio from CBS Boston uh, about that. Uh, the CDC head says Massachusetts and other states shouldn't relax restrictions just yet. Uh, head of Centers for Disease Control says states like Massachusetts may be lifting restrictions too fast. Given the trends that we've seen in just the last couple of days, I, I would say, you know, we can't be in a place where we're lifting restrictions right now. Dr. Rochelle Walensky and Dr. Anthony Fauci went on to say that we are in a very delicate place right now with more than 70,000 new cases a day nationwide. Walensky says the numbers over the last few days suggest a decline, but that our cases may be leveling off too soon. What do you think, Nate? Fuck. Um, I think that it is too soon. I think it could be done safely. I think if it were in responsible people's hands, it could be done safely, but it's not. Just people are too stubborn. Um, I think that it's with the different variations going around and overall, you know what I'm just going to say, just to make it short and sweet, sure. we're so fucking close to the end of this. Why? Like we're getting vaccinations out. We're so close to the end. Why, why risk it? And patience. It's just, but I mean, it's ridiculous. Like, and I know, I know we need to get back to normal. Trust me. I fucking know. There's so many things that I can't do to uh fucking pay rent yeah because i'm like i'm running out of time for that so i know what it's like trust me but you know you can't pay rent either when you're dead um right i, I don't think people come after you for that though they come after other people that's true they'll that's come after true. your family for that but they're not yeah. gonna, they're not going to come after you unless they want to piss all over your grave so like I get I get the need to want to go back to normal. I get the need to open everything up. Um but I just don't think we're responsible enough. I think we've proven that we are not responsible enough to be able to handle it. And I think and I hope I'm wrong. Like I would love to be wrong. I'd yeah. be I would be happy to admit to be wrong if this didn't make things worse, but it could. And we're so close to everybody being vaccinated it just seems kind of like a shame yeah what do you think about music venues reopening that's a tough one because i miss shows i miss going to see bands i miss but i for one am not going that's that's what i've made my mind that i'm not going i i miss shows i miss music i miss everything about it fuck i'm not going no how about you 
Uh, same, because it's not going to be, it's not going to be as fun. Uh, it's just like last summer when the, the first bit of restrictions lifted and restaurants were able to reopen, but without door dining only, I, you know, went and it just, it was nice to be able to be in a restaurant and sit and eat and kind of be near other people. But at the same time, it's just the, you know, having to like having to make restrict or, or reservations when you previously didn't have to make reservations and uh, having to be distanced and being held under a time limit. Like it, it, say the House of Blues reopens soon. It, it, there's going to be distancing in place. There, you're not going to be able to move around. You're going to have to wear a mask. It's like, yeah, let's get the musicians back on the road safely so they can go back to having some semblance of a steady income but uh it's just it, it's just gonna be such a hassle in doing this and having to adhere to safety protocols yeah uh it, now now the bigger venues like uh gillette and uh, gillette stadium and td garden those are reopening uh with like 12 percent capacity and yeah you can still yeah you can have people there that's great but i was listening to i think i was listening to the sports hub and they were talking about what uh restrictions will be in place like at uh let's say like the garden for example and having to order food online through an app like order concessions online through an app which they were saying like hey we should be doing this already because it's such a mess <laughs> like yeah. having to wait in line and having to pay so much but now you're you're bound to it because of covid protocols and uh everyone's put in like a pod and when you exit like you need to wait to be allowed to exit uh like uh, someone will come around and tell you when you can leave just I'd rather wait until we don't have to do that anymore. It's the exact same mindset I have with the vaccine. I would rather wait until I can just waltz into my local pharmacy, my local chemist, and just have them give it to me like a flu shot rather than having to make an appointment on an unreliable website and then have to drive to the building that used to be Sears and then wait in line at a mass vaccination site. Like it's not, it's not worth it. Mm. Not worth it right now. Anyway. I, I come from somebody that is uh, really strong with anxiety. I just think it would just be a bad time. All those situations would be a bad time for me because you are out there and you hear one, like <laughs> you're like, ah, like, you know, it's just, All right. It's just not worth it to me. I would go to a concert if they had bubbles for everyone. Oh, like the, what was it the Violent Femmes that are doing that or the Flaming Lips? <laughs> yeah. Flaming Lips is doing that. Yeah. But to be fair, to be fair. To be fair. The Flaming Lips are fair. just bizarre to begin with. So I'm not surprised. They're Vaseline, right? Flaming Lips? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. She don't use okay. jelly. Yeah. Uh, I know them for that. Uh, you're like, did you know you're the most beautiful person or whatever? They used to play it on an ad like 15 I'm, years ago. I'm not Everything. Familiar. I, I, God, I feel like uh, Grandpa from the Rugrats. Back uh, in my day. <laughs> well, he, he was obsessed with the number 15. 15. And everything I reference, anytime I talk about something, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's like 15 years ago. And I'm thinking about, like, yeah, 15 years ago is 2006. That's when, like, for me, all the best stuff was happening. I graduated. Yeah. Uh, shit, man. I met Kate 15 years ago. Um, yeah. But like all, all the best music, all the best video games, like all, all the all the things that I predominantly remember was 15 years ago. So now every time I talk about, yeah, 15 years ago, 15 miles uphill both ways. <laughs> I used to have to walk 15 miles in the snow. <laughs> yeah. Um, game, That's coming back. It is Rugrats. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know how to feel about, uh, I don't know how to feel about it either. I mean, it, it, I, I'll watch it. I'll watch it. I'll watch it. I, I don't think I like the fact that it's, 
like CGI now. Uh, I do like that the most well-known voice cast is still intact. They didn't pull a Powerpuff Girls and recast everybody. That would have been a disaster. Oh, yeah. I'm excited about that much. So I'll give it a chance. I'm hoping because it's locked behind Paramount Plus, which you have to pay for, that they will be able to uh, be a little more liberal with their humor and their writing. Kids will probably still be watching it, but because you have to shell out extra money to watch it. Uh, I was watching the Snoopy show on Apple TV because I have... Uh, and Anytime you buy an Apple product now, they give you some amount of time for Apple TV Plus. And I was watching the Snoopy show because uh, Cooper really likes... Every time you saw an, I see an ad <laughs> for it, Cooper really likes the sounds. So I figured, oh, wow. to, so I figured to actually calm him down and get him to not be a psychopath for a few minutes. I put it on it's Snoopy a show. dog show. Yeah. Oh, well, it's hilarious. Holy shit. And there's like so much meta humor in it. And it's, uh, it's not like adult humor, but there's just things in there that you kind of see it with even like, you know, I haven't seen it with more recent cartoons is they're, they're starting to, the humor's more self-aware now. And it's, they're going back to doing stuff that is, is, both funny for the adults and the kids. So I'm hoping that with a new Rugrats series, they will, you know, go back to making like double entendres and they probably will. You know, we'll have like the, Although, naked, the naked Tommy episode again. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to say because like you can't get away with as much as you could back then. Well, everything the everything's thing, too PC now. It's difficult. Yeah. I fucking hate um, it. Question. <laughs> yep, I remember that. Oh, uh, the things I missed when I was a kid. Uh, well, speaking of, of 2PC, uh, Mr. Potato Head is no longer Mr. He's, he's, yeah. he's gender neutral Potato Head. He's them Potato Head. Yes. Uh, according to the Associated Press, Hasbro created Confusion Thursday when it announced that it would drop the mister from the brand's name in order to be more inclusive and so all could feel, quote, welcome in the potato head world. It also said it would sell a new playset this fall without the mister and missus designations that will let kids create their own type of potato families, including two moms or two dads. Stop, please. Come on. <sighs> well... Like, I guess that's just the way it is, you know? Did, I mean, it's Did someone it's get offended about this? That's why I want to know. Did someone actually get worked up over this? That it was Mr. and Mrs. and it can't be Mr. and Mrs. now. It needs to be gender neutral. I don't know. I, I feel like it... Yeah, I don't know what caused it. But I do know that they looked into it and it was like, well, it kind of forced the stereotypical, like man and wife like that that's the way the norm is yeah and it's not that you can have two moms you can have two dads and um which is totally fine that i'm i'm okay yeah. with that i encourage that i make it clear i have absolutely no problem with that what i have a Me problem either. with is is uh going in and disrupting something that was fine this whole time and there was there was nothing wrong with it and now we have to change it just because someone probably got offended because that's what happens now. People get offended over the dumbest shit. Like I, I was actually thinking the other day, how about I just like, how, how about I just do what the, the nuns do and take the oath of silence for a year? Because like, it's going to come to the point where I could say hello to someone and they'll get offended because uh, you know, it's not, it's not the proper greeting. It may make the podcast very difficult for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if people would like that. Yeah. That's what's like, so, that's something that I fear now just doing this show is like that I you know, I have this outlet where, you know, we 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 are free to speak our minds and someone one day like someone could get offended and worked up over me not agreeing with gender neutral potato head. Yeah. I mean, here, here's one little tr dancing on that. Here's someone that will uh, uh, probably trigger people. You know what I don't like that I think is stupid? What? What people on social media now, and they do it at work now, they do it wherever they can, is they sign 
or they they oh, put, the change things well they put something that designates like you know if it said nate fillers he slash him oh those yeah oh my god like if you have a name that is like i guess i don't know if this is the right term like gender neutral or gender agnostic like like let's use shannon for example because that could be a male or female name predominantly female but there are male shannons out there that makes sense okay like if you have to put like he him because yeah i work with someone who who prefers their name uh they, they go by their middle name which is ash ashley we all call him ash but there are a yeah. lot of people that like if they don't know him and have never interacted with him they think ashley is a female i think that's something where it would make sense to to call that out but if your name is clearly nathaniel and you're putting he him yeah no shit now I get it. People I feel like people want to be like, uh, you know, they. Oh God, like, and that, see, this is just where I'm gonna, you know, get into trouble because I'm not. I'm. I, I can't think of the right term. I, I'll guess I'll just say like gender neutral because there are people that want to be the them, right? Yeah. Uh, and if I'm not sure if, because I work with a lot of individuals from other countries where I, I'm not sure based on their names, what what gender they are, I'll just go with them just to be safe. But yeah, like I'm never I'll, I'll tell you this. I will never sign my name as Jack Gill. He him. I don't have and I don't think you should have to put that unless like you really care whether you're addressed as that. Like, I don't care if you think I'm a woman. I don't care if you think I'm a guy. I, don't, I really could care less or couldn't care. I forget which one it is. Right. I could. Could. No, I couldn't. I couldn't care. Couldn't less. care less because it's impossible for me to care less. <laughs> But uh, to some people, it doesn't matter. And those people should, they, they should be allowed that they sign it that way. Or, but I don't think everybody should be forced to identify. I don't. Yeah. Because if it doesn't matter to you, it shouldn't matter. Yeah. Like, is, you can call me her if you want. I don't care. Yeah. This isn't uh, THX 1137. Is that what it was? It was George Lucas's first movie. First movie. And I think it based the sound system off of. Yeah. <laughs> Turn it up. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have that? I think uh, you have to. I have. I have it somewhere. I have that. You do. Uh, I don't have it in here, though. Sorry. Damn it. I have the. Um, from Tiny Toons. I was like, oh, it's the sound system oh, yeah, promo. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but they're, they're, the whole thing in that movie was like everyone was just uh, uh, there. There were no genders. There were no male. Yeah. There were no female. Like you could have mates, but uh, it, it removed that. But it, that was also like the dystopian Orwellian society. Yeah, and I, I hear you exactly. Like whenever we do these talk things. It feels like we're walking on thin ice all the time because it's just like it's just going to take us saying something a certain way for somebody to be like, hey, what you said was fucked up. And, you know, at that point, you educate me and then I, I learn from it. Oh, I've I've definitely been on the receiving end of that. I've said it before. I'll say it again. People have come to me and they've been like, I listened to your podcast and you sent to something that really offended me. OK, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> let it let it just be that. Yeah. Don't cancel people because they right. said something and then they, now they changed it. Yeah. But if they, there's certain people though, like we we come back to this every single time. There are certain people that have earned the cancel status, but yeah, I think everybody in the world has done something fucked at some point. And I think if we held everybody accountable by just, pulling away their platform or canceling them, so to speak, then we'll have nothing in the future. So yeah. Can't cancel the cancel the Matt Lowers. I started watching the morning show because <laughs> I again going back to Apple TV. I yeah. started watching the morning show and the whole premise of the first episode of Steve Carell is basically Matt Lauer. And he got, you know, he, he got fired from his uh morning show gig because he was just banging his assistants. Matt Lauer documented creep documented uh, uh animal right cancel those people don't cancel don't cancel people who said like uh, cancel the flaming racists 
Don't cancel. Yeah. Don't cancel Morgan Wallen just because he got drunk and said something stupid once. Yeah. And don't cancel people who actually show some degree of accountability and want to change and actually are yeah, working and, to change. And I think that's important is that we work as a society towards changing it, not canceling, because I might be completely wrong with my viewpoints and I won't know unless I say something and someone says, hey, I don't think you've seen it this way. Like, I'm sure somebody out there will see Mr. Potato Head and Mrs. Potato Head, they'll, they'll get it. They'll understand why it's offensive and they will tell me about it. And then I would be like, oh, you make a very good point. I didn't see it that way. And now I'm that. But as of right now, I don't get it. And that's where we are right now. We don't get it. Yeah. So if we were to, if we were too scared to say that we don't get it, then we would never go to the next step. Just saying, just playing devil's advocate. Yeah. But Welcome. it does seem like we're all just trying to jerk everybody off and make sure everybody feels good all the time. I don't know where I was going with that analogy. No, I, I, I hear you. Welcome to the era in which we live. Yeah. And, and I think really it's only going to get worse. It's really it's it's going to get to the point where now just speaking gets you in trouble <laughs> yeah it's gonna be tough for me because i want to do comedy someone's gonna someone's gonna point out they're gonna listen to this and they're gonna be they're gonna point out like yeah um you said something very disparaging about the song what's up by four non blondes and i'll have you know that females are allowed to express their opinions what yeah <laughs> by the way here we go pardon me gangway excuse me you walking area code could you move your out Way to get snacks, though. Lights are dimming! Lights are dimming! Guy! Sound system promo! That was an unexpected ending. <laughs> was it? I, I I think the theme of today's show is Jack forgets things he made. Yeah. <laughs> forgets how they end. <laughs> All right. Uh, when we come back, Nate, you sent me something. I'm going to put you on the spot for it. That's cool. Uh, but we got some. I'm ready. We got some um, more stuff for you here in this episode of Hardly Focused, our 494th. Uh, we've got a doctor who joined a Zoom meeting while he was operating on a patient. And then uh, Nate with a story about people who believe that snow is fake. And we're not talking about the Canadian reggae superstar. Oh, <laughs> Nice reference. Thank you. All right, stick around. Hardly focus. What was that name of that uh, Neon Genesis? That I, mis I can never fucking pronounce it right. <laughs> this podcast is hardly focused. Evangeline, Evan, Evan, Evangeline, Evangeline, Jolie. Hear more at hardlyfocus.com. Man, I fucking love the franchise, and I can't even fucking pronounce the name right. <laughs> The Hardly Focused Web Store, featuring Hardly Focused branded shirts, stickers, and face masks. Spend some of your hard-earned money at hardlyfocused.com slash store. This podcast contains explicit content. You are listening to Hardly Focused. I wouldn't have noticed if you didn't call attention to it. <laughs> Hardly Focus. Thanks for checking us out. Jack Gill, Nate Fillers. You can find us at hardlyfocus.com. We are on the social medias at facebook.com slash hardlyfocuspodcast. And we are on Twitter at focusedhardly. Uh, I did not make a production piece for our music segment that we do every week, Hardly Shuffled. However, the songs will still be added to our Hardly Shuffled playlist, which you can find at hardlyfocus.com slash shuffled. 
Then we got State Radio. We got Proceed. That's yours, Nate. Yeah. Uh, State Radio being my pick. Uh, we've got uh, Robert D. Club to Death from The Matrix. That was Fro's pick. And then uh, Mr. Mike Torara picked Bomba Estereo with Soyoy. Soyoy. <laughs> yep. So Good songs. Check them out. Find that at Hardly focus.com slash shuffled follow our playlist on spotify we have such a good variety yeah good uh i, I like that fro usually picks uh like the ambient instrumentals and mike picks nine inch nails every other week <laughs> yeah and my songs are usually just depressing <laughs> so yeah i try to change it up yeah nate's got like i think the most colorful variety of anybody well, I just seriously go on Spotify and type in like on repeat and then I just see which ones I've listened to the most. I, I usually pick how, like that's how I do it. I usually pick like whatever's in my uh, stuck in my head at the moment. Yeah. And uh, the last hardly focus we did featured intern Skippy, his first appearance on the show in about a decade. And him and I both picked Machine Gun Kelly, which was pretty interesting. I mean, it was Unexpected. also Val it was Valentine's Day. I intentionally uh, picked bloody valentine but uh and then i and i let him pick too and he's like yeah i'm gonna do machine gun kelly he's like i'm kind of ashamed because he listens to like metalcore and plays in a metalcore band and i'm like i don't think you should be okay. ashamed to like machine gun kelly's new album that rips off blink 182 never Why mind not? travis barker plays on it but Go other, for it. other people might judge you, but the most important thing is I'm not judging them. So yeah, I've never got that. I never got like, you know, I'm embarrassed that I listen to this, like, what do they call it? It's got a name, but a guilty pleasure, I guess yeah. is what it is. Well, I never really understood that because I, like, if you like it, fuck it. I used know? to get that shit back in like, back in like middle school. Cause I was like really into like Van Halen and, uh, you know, would listen to that a lot and being on the school bus. That was the only time you could really listen to music and I'd, I'd get grief for listening to it. Uh, and I'm like, well, what should I be listening to? And it, all, white people tell me to listen to hip hop. Like, yeah, no, thank you. I remember I was listening to uh hybrid theory by Lincoln park. And someone was like, Oh, Jack's finally listened to something good. I think go F yourself. I'll listen to whatever the I, hell I want. I did like Dr. Dre. Oh, yeah. Well, I still do, but yeah, not because other people told me to. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll, okay. I'll listen to whatever the hell I want to listen to. And if someone's telling me, hey, listen to Nelly. Hey, I listen to Nelly. I don't like Nelly. Yeah. So people I like put it. Charlie 2 N A on. Yeah. Tina. Pe pe people are like, listen to that, uh, the, the fucking... Oh, what is his name? Post Malone. Listen to him. Like, uh, yeah, he looks like Shia LaBeouf. No, thank you. <laughs> he does a little bit. Post office. I, I almost called him Post Office Man, but that's not his name. <laughs> it is now. All right. Um, what do we got here? Uh, so a doctor uh, needed to go to court. I'm assuming for a speeding violation. It could be something else. And uh, I, I'm saying that because there's a cop present. That's usually if you're if you're going to court and the cop is there, it's or something mundane like a, like a traffic violation. Uh, and the doctor was in the middle of performing surgery during the uh, during the court appearance. I've seen memes where like now that we've switched to remote learning because of the pandemic. Like there's this one meme of a kid who was getting his haircut while he's in class. All the <laughs> kids are good. all the kids are sitting, you know, they're on camera and they're just sitting in their bedrooms or in their kitchens or whatever. And then you have the one kid and it's like a, it's like a, a, a side profile of him um, just at the barbershop. Yeah. Get, getting snipped while snip, snip. <laughs> while he's in class. What's such a weird time, right? weird time I'm, to be alive i'm not gonna get over that i'm not gonna get over like the news people uh broadcasting from their houses it's just so weird i know like all the the radio people now are all doing that and um and you can tell like first and foremost i'm gonna pull a howard stern and say everyone's ripping me off and everyone's ripping <laughs> us off because we've been doing this for 
a it was very cool. long time. We've had the home studio before it was cool. And now everyone's doing it and everyone's on Zoom and you can see what their homes look like. And I'm just like, you know what? LOL is what I say to that. I hate to say I told you so. It's nothing new. Not, not for me. Yeah. And the naysayers, everyone who, who, who ridiculed me for doing this. Well, guess what? Now you're stuck doing it. So who's laughing now? Yeah, a big old, <laughs> big old middle finger to y'all. Okay, this comes from an account called at LawyerCat. I think LawyerCat deleted the video, but not before it was shared by a shit pile. I mean, Ajit Pai, former FCC oh, yeah. head honcho. Good riddance. Uh, here is, uh, let me pull this up and play a split second of audio while I so while I try to finagle okay here's the screen share this is going to go over well for anyone listening to the audio only <laughs> okay here we go so uh can everybody hear me officer, yes, sir. officer Monroe Mr. Green Elizabeth Ramirez, uh, is she part of this case? Yes. Oh, people are just coming in. What I'm looking at is Scott Douglas Green's case, case number 20, TRO 95795. I believe Officer Monroe is present on this case as well. So unless I'm mistaken, I'm seeing a defendant that's in the middle of an operating room appearing to be actively engaged in providing services to a patient. Is that correct, Mr. Green? Yes, sir. Or what I sh should I say, Dr. Green, but I don't know that. Okay. Oh, he said Dr. Green. <laughs> <laughs> I suck. <laughs> uh, that's a good sound drop, though. Why do I exist? And this judge too. It appears that you're you uh doctor? you're you're administering medical care of some sort. Like you're... the dude's clearly a surgeon. The dude's clearly a doctor. Just fucking say you're tending to a patient. You're in surgery. I can judge articulate over here. Judgy judgmental guy. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Mr. Judgmental. Ah. No, it's my Halloween costume, Your Honor. I thought I would spice it up. I'm a cosplayer. Just like that guy below me dressed as a cop. <laughs> I'm with a client. I'm a male hooker. We're playing doctor and patient. I'm about to give him a rectal exam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's, uh, here's more of this. Is that correct, Mr. Green? Yes, sir. Or what I sh should I say, Dr. Green? But I don't know. Okay, that's so, okay. Um, I do not feel comfortable uh, for the welfare of a patient if you're in the process of operating that I would put on a trial, notwithstanding the fact that the officer's here today. What's sir, I have another. I have another surgeon right here who's doing the surgery with me, so I can stand here and allow them to do the surgery also. Not at all. I'm, I, I don't think so. I don't think that's appropriate. I think we're going to have, I'm going to come up with a different date when you're not actively involved or participating in attending to the needs of a patient. Um, let me see if I can get a different date here. <laughs> wow. What a dick. That is crazy. He was there. He was prepared. He could do it. Just let him do it. That is that is crazy. Like, I can see why he was uncomfortable, but at the same time, if he if he has somebody else doing the procedure, you fucking wanted him to be there, right? This is happening because of you guys. So yeah, if guys like uh, any, I, I don't know like any of the details behind this, but if uh the doctor is like a like a trauma surgeon, for example. Like, literally, life or death. And if yeah. this is over, like, a traffic violation, too, just, like, how long is that going to take? Yeah, and if a worst-case scenario, if things started to get really fucking bad, he would just be like, I'm sorry, I have to go. Right. 
And like, that would, that's it. That's, yeah. that's all it would be. Although I will say that I'm a little bit of a hypocrite because if I was getting surgery, <laughs> I wouldn't want my doctor on a Zoom <laughs> court. See, See, this is where we disagree because I I love that. That's a story to tell. <laughs> like, hey, I was I was getting a uh, I was getting a hernia operated on. I was getting my gallbladder removed. <laughs> my doctor, while he was operating on me, was at a court hearing <laughs> at the same time. So wait, you were in the courtroom? Nah, no, it was all <laughs> it was crazy. Like, look, I I I jest, but there is an episode of ER where Eric LaSalle is like operating on someone while trying to walk Noah Wiley through a, a medical procedure in the field over his cell phone. I mean, yeah, it's Hollywood, but look, if they can do it, then this guy can do it. I mean, surgeons are talented. They know how to do two things at once. Yeah. I'm well, not saying they should, but they can. Don't just assume because you can't that other people can't. Look, I watch a lot of medical drama, so I know where the line is between uh, realism and Hollywood. And let me tell you, there is no such thing as a line between realism and Hollywood. It's all it's all real. Every medical drama you see where someone is getting operated on, it's real. It's actually happening. It's it's some actor who's trying to break into the business and was told, hey, we'll pay you scale if you want to have your skull opened up and have your brain operated on. And 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 they say, well, it's either this or the uh, the black couch in a seedy looking office. So uh, yeah, I'll take the brain surgery. Go for it. Yeah. Can you add some smarts to me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm actually curious now if there is any if there was any follow up on uh, on this if the doctor was able to have his hearing this article was posted today so i don't know if there is any doctors are pretty busy yeah. i don't know if you know this <laughs> doctors this year and last year they kind of have some stuff going on oh here's here's some here's some malarkey here according to the bbc quote the medical board of california has now said in a statement that it would look into the incident adding that it quote expects physicians to follow the standard of care when treating their patients Oh, pshaw, pish posh is what I say. I mean, I don't understand how it happened in the first place. Why didn't he just say that he was, he couldn't do that date? Why couldn't they just do a date that he could do? You know, you know what he could have done? He could have just sneezed, right? And then now he's not sterile. Now he's contaminated. Well, scrub out, go to your court hearing. Yep. No. Well. Uh, should have, would have. And uh, don't forget, this comes hot on the heels of this. Oh, I'm here live. That's not. I'm not a cat. <laughs> I can. I can see that. <laughs> what were we just saying about these are weird times? Uh, the BBC News has contacted. I like how they're saying. Well, actually, no. I, I actually learned this from watching ER for the millionth time is that in uh, the UK, you're not referred to as doctor. They actually do Mr. and Mrs. Um, oh, okay. So, uh, quote, BBC News has contacted Mr. Green's office for comment. The surgeon reportedly told NBC News, quote, that's not accurate and I have nothing to say. Thank you. See, th there you go. There's the lie. He says, I have nothing to say. And then he immediately says something. Stick to it. Calls himself a doctor. You know, I'm starting to, uh, I'm starting to question his, um, credentials here he might be an actor yeah <laughs> there's a great ad that played a while back for cigna and they they got like every great tv doctor to be part oh, of yeah it. i remember seeing that that alan alda and patrick dempsey no wiley uh and uh black scrubs yep uh donald Faison. I couldn't think of his name. Sorry, that's not PC. Thanks. I'm quoting Family Guy, but I understand it's not PC. I like scrubs. I like black scrubs. <laughs> okay, Nate. Uh, fake snow. Tell me about that. 
Oh my God. So I heard that stuff like videos were going viral, I think maybe via TikTok of uh, people from Texas picking up snow and holding their lighters to it, you know, and it was burning. And they said, see, this is fake. This is all propaganda from China or Bill Gates or to make us believe in global warming. Uh... <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> like, Jesus, that is such a... So what they were doing is they were saying, oh, look, it doesn't melt. So it's clearly not real snow. Well... If you do any sort of research or, you know, attended any science class, you know the way snow works is when it melts, it can melt into itself until it's at the rate where it can't obtain any more water and then it leaks out. Okay. Now it was also turning black because that's just the way soot works. <laughs> if you burn things, they're going to turn. Uh, do people just not look up stuff and they're just like, it's fake. It's fake snow. Dead. Yeah. That's them. I just don't get it. Like, day, day. Yeah. Yeah. These are the same people that, uh, like you just said, that support every QAnon theory. Yeah. It's just like, for fuck's sake. If you're going to believe something, do the fucking work. Don't just say, oh, it's true because I believe it. I want to ask Mike uh, Lindell, the the uh, my pillow guy, what he thinks about this. I guarantee you he's going to think it's fake. Yeah. Promise you he's going to think it's fake. And you know, you know what's great about that is that uh, Dominion is playing to just destroy him financially, which makes me so happy. Me too, because I worked at Bed Bath & Beyond, and you better believe we got a lot of returns for those pillows. And we couldn't resell them. We couldn't. So what did I do? I had to throw them away. But not before I cut one open, just to see what was inside. <laughs> uh, the souls of children. Yeah, and foam. Yeah, it's like, like it's like triangle shaped foam. It's just a little it? triangle shape like they cut like a like a mattress topper. It's like they just cut it into little pieces and stuffed it into a pillowcase. And they're like it's the perfect pillow. Yeah, if they're not going to bury all that in a landfill, then uh they're just going to penny that stuff out at all the retailers who are no longer selling it, right? Uh I know like yeah. Kohl's, Bed Bath and Beyond, a bunch of people are no longer selling my pillow good yep <clears throat> so uh in texas now texas got fucked they really they got fucked that just and i i'm going to just flat out say that climate change is not a myth because really uh because <laughs> l look at a region that is known for being arid and warm and then it gets hit by a blizzard, which never happens, and it shuts the pretty much the entire state down, most of the state. Uh, it knocks power out. It, it, it People were just boned in every direction, in every orifice because of this weather, and no yeah. one knew how to react. Now, every year, now they do have wild weather that is uh, unusual for the region. It does happen. My source being my wife, who is an insurance uh, claims adjuster who, who who deals with all of the serious stuff, who pulls her hair out anytime these things happen in places like Texas because it's always uh, people who have never seen rain before and then proceed to do 80 miles an hour down the highway and spin out in hydroplane or... Uh, it gets so cold that like uh, it, it flurries or a little bit of ice. They don't know what they're doing out there. They don't get it, so they don't know how to react. But 
uh, then the big blizzard happens. There, I, I will go out on a limb and say their equivalent of the blizzard of 78 occurred. And people are still yeah. talking about it. So I've actually lived in the South for a few years. Um, it's different because up here we're prepared and we've treated the roads and everything like that. And we have like the equipment to like deal with the snow. But when it snows in a place that it usually doesn't, it like fucks up a lot of shit. Like even the smallest amount of snow makes the road slippery because like here, our roads are treated a certain way to handle a certain amount of snow. They don't have anything there. So it's fucking crazy. Cause I was like, what the hell this whole city shut down because it's like a dusting. That's all it takes. Right. They don't have any way of getting rid of it. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> Imagine if that was like up here where every year when we get our, our annual slew of blizzards and and we just shut down like it doesn't happen yeah I, I woke up yesterday morning and there had to have been like an inch or two of snow on the ground and i just shrugged yeah. like yeah whatever and, and it, like two hours later it all melted because it, it all gonna, of a sudden warmed up and, and started raining but i'm gonna pull a 15 years ago remember when we were in school they fucking never canceled school right <laughs> for snow i remember freshman year of high school they actually canceled school one day we had it we had a snow day not because of snow but because it was going to be so cold that they're just like yeah everybody stay home because they were afraid yeah. of like pipes freezing somebody got frostbite at like a bus stop That's oh happened. dude uh, you triggered me do you remember map ball <laughs> yeah in gym map ball was the greatest fucking sport so if you don't know what mat ball is, it was basically kickball. It was indoor kickball. We played it on days when we couldn't go outside for uh, what they call physical education. So it was in kickball. If you never played kickball, it's basically baseball, but you kick a okay. ball. Your leg is the bat. And mat ball was unique in that you could have any number of people on a base at a time. So you could just fill up like third base with like 10 people. And if uh, you were proficient enough at kicking a ball, then you could have 10 people score and get 10 points right then and there. Uh, I remember uh, being one of the few people to ever do this because I'm just so incompetent at sports. I go to kick the ball. It fucking goes straight up in the air behind me. <laughs> and uh where we were kicking it from, there was a basketball hoop, you know, the, the hang down from the rafters right there, and it went through the hoop. And uh, there were people on every base, and there was uh, multiple people on every base, and our, our gym teacher, who was a known alcoholic, was like, holy shit, grand slam. Everybody scores. <laughs> I was like the MVP, and then the next week, like, someone got hurt, and uh, Matt Ball uh, went the way of the dodo. And I got hurt all the fucking time playing that game. People are always asking, hey, you're limping. And I'm like, yeah, I'm hurting. We were playing mat ball. It's so much fun. I'm not going to complain. It was a wooden gym, like a wooden floor gym that had like mats, like big mats. And you basically had to run your life away to get from third base to, because you had to do two laps, right? If I remember correctly, you had to go to the first you had to go to the second and you had to go around again. You couldn't just go third and home. Um, or at least that's what it was for me. I don't know if they changed it for you, but we had to go around twice. Right. Um, and, and when you were going from third base to first base again, it was long, like a very long distance. So you had to fucking run. And sometimes you would run too hard. And sometimes you would have to slide on the wood. So. Right. Uh, the, the, the These were like the the mats that were uh you know they're up on the walls of the gym yeah. and we you, we took them down and we use them as the bases and uh is if we learn anything from the simpsons uh not a lot of meat in these gym mats to start putting money back into the school you cut back on everything salaries supplies the food I don't care what you say, I can taste the newspaper posh shredded newspapers add much needed roughage and essential inks Besides, you didn't notice the old gym mats. There's very little meat in these gym mats. 
<laughs> Simpsons did it. Always a Simpsons reference. Um, yeah. This from North Carolina from a few years ago, uh, 2018 to be specific, but uh, there's a, a weather cast that they had to put it in the layman's of layman's terms uh, to explain driving in the snow. I don't know if you remember this, but quote, if you rarely drive on snow, just pretend you're taking your grandma to church. There's a platter of biscuits and two gallons of sweet tea and glass jars in the back seat. She's wearing a new dress and holding a crock pot full of gravy. I've never heard that. And it's real. This is, this is something That's that great. absolutely aired and happened. And you know what? Explain it that way and people will listen and people will understand. Mm -hmm. And get some tea and biscuits and... Mm. Yeah, it's. It, uh, I, I don't think it helps. <laughs> I think there was still. No, in a, fact, I'm hungry now. I think there was probably still an insane amount of um, uh, car accidents that happened. But hey, you tried. Yeah. So this is just a case of people not understanding science, and they just will reach for anything to not be scared. Basically, I, I get that. Climate change is scary. I get it. But just because you're afraid of something doesn't make it not real. Like uh, reverse Freddy Cougar rules. Yeah, exactly. Um, think of the movie with Kevin Costner, Waterworld. The reason why it was called Waterworld. He had to drink his own pee in the beginning. Yeah. This is, this is a thing that could happen. This is absolutely a thing that could happen. We're already, we're already well on our way to it happening. Just look yeah. at the region in which we live with its uh, abnormally humid winters. I think it's RoboCop 2 that has a, a, a line where someone's complaining about it being 110 degrees in the shade and it's January and they're in it's Detroit. Coming. It's coming soon. Yeah. Coming soon. And allergies are getting worse every year. Like <laughs> you know, allergens. I'll, I'll say this: I liked the news that came out this week that the seasonal flu cases of that have gone down exponentially <laughs> because we have a much worse uh, disease that's plaguing everybody. But the sniffles, oh, don't have to worry about that. I certainly haven't had to worry about that. Yep. Don't get sick in my house. I don't go anywhere. Yeah, me neither. You know, my, my exciting trips are to the supermarket, occasionally to Target, and uh, maybe to Freckle Bitches to sit in the parking lot and enjoy a jalapeno chicken something or other. It's whatever the new thing they added to the menu is. Uh, it's the ass blaster, basically. <laughs> you just reminded me that I almost tweeted the other day, like, what sort of new snacks are out there? Because I have no idea. You know, you go to the grocery store and you like... Oh, that's new. I haven't had that for an entire year. Uh, the Lady Gaga Oreos. Get those if you go. Those are oh, good. Those are the pink and blue. What, what were the? the yeah, they're they're, they're, they're colors, pink right? and green. Green. And they've got okay. like Lady Gaga insignia, like like uh, on the cookies, like Chromatica, for example. But uh, they're good. I mean, I polished off What's... an entire entire uh, uh, package of them. So I think they're just the golden Oreos, just with food. Oh, color. Okay, I was gonna say, what's the flavor there, there's no like it's not lady gaga flavored <laughs> it tastes like lady gaga now nah, nah, that's something i'm gonna be thinking about <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's what you, you, can you blame me you make like have they ever made a person like cookie <laughs> going back to the simpsons but tamako <laughs> oh, yeah. he tastes like grandma <laughs> hey you're right yeah. these do taste like grandma <laughs> yeah <laughs> why do you know what that tastes like <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh the, I, I watched through the sopranos last year and was actually surprised to see lady gaga in an episode um i think uh meadow was doing some dumb shit like they broke into their their school's gym after hours and one of her friends was played by lady gaga before she was lady gaga it was like a, just a random, I think it was like her first acting credit. And she was credited under her uh, her real name. I remember her real name. Stephanie? Stephanie so. Germati, I think. Um, uh, but yeah, and then a couple years later, she became Lady Gaga. So, so surreal. Yeah. Uh, I got the audio uh, from WZZM 
13.com about the burning snow. Do you want to listen to it? Sure. Go for it. Okay. Here we go. This video was one of many that spread around TikTok and other social media platforms after snow hit parts of the country where the people there are not accustomed to seeing it. They claim the way the snow reacts to... Hold on, hold on, hold on. What'd she say? Parts of the condo? Did you hear that? I did, but I was also drinking, so... I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what that means. I thought it was just bubbles. Yeah, what is she, me? She's just... Not pronouncing anything correctly. Probably. <laughs> Probably. You cut out for like a split <laughs> second. That was perfect. Uh, <laughs> oh, I pretty much said it like that. Probably. Probably. Okay. Uh, let's let's hear that again. It spread around TikTok and other social media platforms after snow hit parts of the country where the people there are not accustomed to seeing it. They claim the way the snow reacts to fire proves that it's actually fake snow. Conspiracies range from government-controlled weather to Bill Gates and seemingly everything in between. Meteorologist Michael Behrens joins us now to demonstrate why this is just normal snow and explain what we are seeing, Michael. Yeah, that's right, Juliet. This sort of rumor develops online pretty much any time places get snow that aren't used to seeing it. I'm going to show you it's pretty much going to happen with any snow, no matter where it's from. This is Michigan snowfall. We can all be pretty much reasonably certain this is real snow. And I'm going to grab a big snowball of it here. And then I'm going to take this lighter and we're going to put it up against it. And you'll notice the snow, it doesn't drip when the flame actually hits it. If I can get the flame to actually go here, that would be the best part. But you'll notice no dripping coming from the snow. So what's going on? Well, we're adding energy to this snow and it's undergoing something called sublimation. That's what happens when you skip the liquid step of water and you go straight to a gas. But it's not the only thing going on here. You can see this video I shot earlier today. We grabbed a big snowball from outside and then we put it into a frying pan. We didn't add any heat to that pan. Wait, hold on. Hold on one second. Hold on. They did what? They added it to the what? Just toss that ham in the frying pan like spam. You had to. I spend a lot of time putting things <laughs> together for this goddamn show. You do. You earned it. <laughs> I have no you life. You do it fast. I oh, mean, hey. that's what she said. I've lived my life. Uh, by, by, by doing everything lickety split. Is that why you like Sonic? Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> they call me Sonic the Hedgehog in the bedroom because I uh, gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. Yuck, 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 yuck. Just toss that ham in the frying pan. All right, more of this. Big snowball from outside, and then we put it into a frying pan. We didn't add any heat to that pan, but what we did do is leave it there to melt. And you'll notice that a lot of the melting occurred before any water dropped onto the pan. That's because the snow itself, like a snow cone, is absorbing that melt water until it becomes too saturated with the slush that it can't hold anymore, and then the water starts to come out onto the ground. That's what you're seeing there near the end of the video. Now, the other claim this makes is that the charring, you can see kind of uh, some of it right here on the snowball where it got a little bit black, that that was evidence that this snowball is not real, but I can prove that as a falsehood in another way too. That actually is soot coming from the flame of this lighter. Something to prove that, here's a razor blade. We can all pretty much agree that a lighter can't burn this razor blade, but if we put the lighter underneath it, of course, if I can get the flame to hold here long enough, I'm not burning the razor blade, but I will start to turn the razor blade black and the reason for that you can see that blackening there on the razor blade is again the soot coming from the lighter and it's imperfect combustion of the fuel so this is just perfectly normal snow it won't turn to liquid when you put a flame to it and that's nothing to be suspicious about you are fake news <laughs> <laughs> what did i say says everyone in texas that video coming from Michigan, by the way, where there's there's snow on the ground like nine months out of the year. Yeah. So it's definitely real. And uh, I do like that, that, you know, coming from a meteorologist, too. You kind of have to expect he knows what he's talking about. Maybe <laughs> that's. A, yeah, he does. I was just being funny. Right. But I realized that could be taken the wrong way. And I'm not I'm above that. Do you, do you remember there was a video 
a few years ago of I think like a hurricane was hitting some region. It was like a big hurricane. It might have been like Irma or something. And some just random jabroni that they interview who was just like walking on the beach as the storm was approaching. And they go up to him and they just ask him like, why are you out here? What do you think about the hurricane? And the guy starts spitting licks like a meteorologist he just starts like he starts talking like a meteorologist he starts explaining like the anatomy of a hurricane as it makes landfall and i don't know if he was like he could have been a paid actor (gasps) he could have been a tommy cruise yeah but he just i don't know if he just like knows uh he knows a lot about weather or what but it was like even the the guy who's uh, the the reporter is even looking at him like what i really want to find this now who knows i mean it could have been just like me and before the show i did some math prep and then when we started the show i seemed like a genius because i could do the math so quick and uh for the record it was not frankie the person who i'm thinking of was not frankie versus snow so 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 plow plow plows (laughs) <laughs> do you do you follow frankie frankie mcdonald i don't <laughs> but i appreciate it oh yeah you know you know it's gonna be serious when frankie is uh given a weather update Massachusetts. earthquake warning has been issued for california yeah it's uh it's serious when frankie gets involved that's uh and when he's telling you to go out uh and get your Several cases of Coke and several cases of Pepsi. That's what I like about him. That's how you know he's not endorsed by anyone because he's telling you to get both. Both. You should follow him. He's a, he's a riot. He's been doing this for 15 years. Is he on the Twitters? He's on the Where YouTube. He? He, he, got on U- okay. he got on YouTube like right when YouTube started. It's, it's his own TV station. Oh, okay. That's what he says. He's like, Frankie McDowell, my own TV station. Nice. Uh, uh, hey, why not? I mean, I was following um, uh, David Lynch for a while, who just has a YouTube channel where he, he like says what the weather in L.A. is and then what the magic number is. Holy shit. OK, so that's from something. <laughs> I don't know if did, did this came before or after, but Joe Escalante, who plays bass in the band The Vandals, mm-hmm. hosted a morning radio show in Los Angeles on a, on a now defunct but prolific radio station called Indy 103.1. And his sports guy who would call in every day unpaid and do sports updates was actor Timothy Oliphant. And his weather guy who would call in daily unpaid and do the weather updates, David Lynch. So I don't know if that, what, what you referred to, derived from that radio show or if, like uh, Joe Escalante found it and was like, Hey, come on my show and do this. But I wonder now. Yeah. It's called the last of the famous international morning shows. Oh, I, I, have you seen any of his weather reports though? There's something magical about him. He's just like, Hey there. It's should, should I pull one up? January the 7th. And we have, golden skies <laughs> golden showers like it's like it's like he's so it's, it's so genuine it just makes you feel comfortable uh like, is it is it david lynch theater um, is that it i i mean I'm, I'm i think that's what, hold on let me just share this for you real I quick think that's what it is hold on. look at your screen is this it um i yeah i think so okay yeah 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 that's it all right, let me just make. I haven't seen it in a while, though. It looks like he's in a different setup. I mean, I've also never seen what David Lynch actually looks like. I'd be kind of scared if we we're we we're all looking at different people. <laughs> yeah, it's just some guy named David Lynch who does weather updates. <laughs> yeah. hey, I love Twin Peaks. <laughs> he's a he's an interesting one. I like his work. Uh, KCRW, which is also based out of Los Angeles, if I'm not mistaken, uh, does the David Lynch Theater Presents Weather Report. 
Weather reporter David Lynch provides a daily update on Southern California's climate. So, hey, still doing it for the radio. That's good. Uh, here we go. Here's today's weather report from David Lynch. Good morning. It's February 28th. Good morning. It's February 28th, 2021, and it's a Sunday. Here in L.A., another clear, sunny morning. Very still right now, 48 degrees Fahrenheit, around 9 Celsius. Today, I was thinking about this being the last day of February. Two months have flown by of 2021. And in the Northern Hemisphere, springtime is getting closer and closer. Should be going up to around 71 degrees today, uh, Fahrenheit in LA, and it's about 22 Celsius. And it looks like, again, we're going to be enjoying those beautiful blue skies and golden sunshine <laughs> all along the way. Everyone, have a great day. <laughs> Thank you, David Lynch. <laughs> He's so <laughs> magical. It's just so like it just I don't know. It just oh just man just does something to me. It just it's just so genuine. Oh, it's just great. Thank you for showing me that. No, oh. no problem. He does the follow up too of like the the today's lucky number where he like picks a ball like that random and he says yeah. today's lucky number is seven. <laughs> like it's just. Well, that's that's it. You don't need to find it because that's basically it. Can I just point out real quick for you? Share my screen again so my suggested videos will come up. Oh, it's fucking listening to me, man. Yep. It know it knows we were talking about ER. I got two clips from <laughs> ER showing it. Weaver on the war path and uh, oh no. Oh no. No, not is. not the letter from Doctor Green. No, I will not watch that. It does. Cry like a little baby if I watch that. Yep. <laughs> George Clooney. George Clooney. Mmm, George Clooney. <laughs> I like George Clooney. He's a good actor. Uh, I, I liked him on South Park when he played the dog. You remember that? I do remember that because I was like, oh, man. Because it's, it's, it said like... Because it was like everywhere. Everyone's like, George Clooney plays a dog. <laughs> He's just like, all he just says is bark. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> I remember that. Because like so many people were trying to get on South Park. Right. They always got like weird roles. Well, they're, they're, like it was also, I mean, it was like the second or third season of South Park. And they were, they were making fun of everybody. You know, I think they had just done like Mecha Streisand. But celebrities weren't playing themselves, and that's still the case with South Park. Celebrities don't play themselves, so this is a rare case of a celebrity coming on and doing a voice. Not even themselves, just like a celebrity, a very well-known celebrity, someone with a distinct voice, too. Because this was sort of like the, the golden era of George Clooney. It wasn't like the yeah. Simpsons where celebrities were begging to be on The Simpsons to the point where just... BS roles were written for him like uh, Jasper Johns for example wanted to be on The Simpsons so bad and they're like yeah we'll have you on but we don't know what we're gonna do with you and it was the uh, unfunniest fucking joke that they've ever done on the, on the show and then they did a Lady Gaga episode too back talking about Lady Gaga and that, that's like one of the worst episodes of the whole series like look if a celebrity says hey I want to be on your show you can say no yeah you should Especially you if you the, cater a story around one thing. I've learned that the hard way. Especially if you're The Simpsons or South Park. You're going to be on forever. We've already established that. You're fine. You don't need to be like Robot Chicken. Robot Chicken was Seth Green, who deserves to get hit by a bus. That show's been on forever, too. And there, you see the end credits, and there are just so many celebrity names that pop up at the end. And you don't even know what the hell they were doing. Same thing with Family Guy. <laughs> Wow, that was great. 
<laughs> oh, Robot Chicken, when that first started, I remember that was like the funniest thing. And it was just like was. Family Guy, too. It was the funniest thing. I remember being... It was my first vacation, like away from my parents. It was me and Ack and Fro and Stefan. And we were up in, in Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. And uh, someone brought season one of Robot Chicken on DVD because that's all that existed. And we watched it and we were like, this is the greatest thing ever. Oh, how naive we were. How jaded we were. It got old. Yes, it did. Oh, yes, wow. Yes, it did. All right. Uh, you just reminded me the, that uh, Daft Punk broke up because I was just like, you know who could uh, do that forever is Daft Punk. I'm sad. Ro robots. I'm, I'm sad, but I'm not surprised because they they were always so elusive with everything. Yeah. But I wouldn't it have been awesome, though, if they handed it down to somebody and they just never told anyone? And we're like, dude, Daft Punk's been around for like... 80 years how old are they <laughs> like really what's going on and they're like the ugliest motherfuckers too if you saw like the unmasked photos they were just yeah. ugly one of them one of one of the guys like the taller guy in daft punk looks like uh freaking what's his name judd hirsch or uh is it judd hirsch the the he, he plays jeff goldblum's father in independence day Oh yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking. My about. son David, you all be dead if it were for my son David. Yep. But they could have done that. They could have, because I think didn't they do that during like, like the MTV Music Awards or like the the Emmys or something? Like Daft Punk played a performance, but they were like also in the audience during the performance. Oh, just a just a Paul Banksy on everybody. Yeah, I think I don't know how true that was. I didn't like really look into it, but they could totally have done that. Do you remember when they were going to be on the Colbert Report and then they like cancel at the last second? Yep. And that was like yeah, a really big else. deal because they didn't do like the late night, not just late night shows, just any sort of like television. Yeah, there's no points. interviews. All right. Uh, prolific enough that one of their albums was a film soundtrack. Mm hmm. And it was great. It was absolutely fantastic. But and then, well, I love. I like that movie too. Tron. Like yeah. a lot of people didn't like Tron. Oh, I loved it. The new, the new one. I thought it was fine, and they were in it. Homie it says cool. new, and it came out in 2010. And what's great is if you look at like it was such a big deal because they had you know the DH Jeff Bridges, and you look at it now and it looks so archaic compared yeah. to like what Marvel has done with de aging. Oh yeah, of course. And it never survived the compression of getting home released. Everything looks great in the theater, and then you get compressed to a DVD, and you're like, oh, no, wait, yep, I can totally tell. Like, I remember um, seeing Rogue One. Uh, I don't want to give spoilers. Uh, it came out. But, it's been long enough, dude. Spoil, I know, spoil the like, greatest movie ever made. You know, like the end, and I was like, well, they did a pretty good job. And then I recently saw it at the home release. I was like... I remember her looking less plastic. You're talking about, uh, I mean, you're talking about Carrie Fisher. Don't don't forget, one of the main characters of that movie is 100% CGI because he's been yeah, that's true. But I didn't for, remember his name, so I didn't want to talk about him. Peter Cushing. Yeah, yeah been, sorry, Peter. He'd been dead for like almost 30 years at that point, but um, that is now the de aging, like what Marvel does, like when they showed uh, the first time it really hit me that they were doing so well with it was I forget which uh, which movie starts off with teenage Robert Downey Jr. But I swear to God, I thought it was like archive footage or something that they used of Robert Downey Jr. from the 80s. And like, no, nah, man, they just de-aged him. Yeah. Uh, you look at like, uh, I mean, yeah, Captain Marvel uh, with Sam Jackson de-aged the entire movie. The last Terminator movie that came out has de-aged uh, Edward Furlong. I mean, they're, they're, they're doing really well with that. It's when you try to uh, either have someone who's dead or you're doing such an extreme job with the de-aging, then it's still very clear that it's fake. That's like a deep fake almost. Yeah. They haven't yet perfected that. I think they will eventually. And when they do, it's going to be scary because then you're going to be gonna seeing be like... so scary, man. You're going to be seeing like... 1930s movie stars showing up again and things but um the, the i mean the technology is there and it's only getting better so yeah okay let's call it at that this sure. has been really fun man 
Yeah, I like this. This was great. I think we're on fire. You, you, and, yeah. you, you and I, we should, we should do a podcast together. High five. High five. Yeah, we should call it um, Talk Radio Mount. <laughs> <laughs> Hate with Nate featuring Jack. Yeah. <laughs> Where Jack hates on everything and Nate just feels uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm like, what can I agree with? I don't know if I'm going to get canceled or not. <laughs> let me let me end with this. We talked about uh, Frankie McDonald, who is the weatherman who uh, should be your only trusted source of anything having to do with weather. Next to the great Al Caprillion, who I don't think I have any sound drops of, uh, but Al Caprillion, the local weather hero. Um, but Frankie McDonald, uh, more nationally known because he's uh, got his own TV station on YouTube. And when the blizzards hit and the earthquakes hit, Earthquake warning! There's been issues for California. Just don't forget, get your cases of Coke and your cases of Pepsi. I think he actually tells you exactly how many. I think it's like five cases of Coke and maybe four cases of Pepsi because we just can't have anything be even. Well, I mean, Pepsi does have more sugar. Uh, uh, see, I have I. I'm weird. I bounce between Coke and Pepsi. Like, I love Pepsi, but, like, I've just been drinking nothing. And when it comes to soda, nothing but Coke. Except for today when I drink a delicious Fresca. I have bubble water myself. Hmm. Fizzy water. Mm. Bubbly. I like burping. Oh, yeah. Me too. And farting. Mm. Oh, man. I've been eating a lot of, like, stuff with buffalo sauce in it lately. Man. My sphincter has been hurting. That is the note on which we end this show. I didn't hear that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear that. Uh, okay, we will end with Frankie McDonald doing a rap for us. Uh, there it was. Okay, and uh, we will talk at you next time. Nate, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, we'll see you then. Uh, we'll talk at you then, I should say. See you, bye. I am Frank and McDonald, the weather man. I do my broadcast, too, especially in the winter months. If it's a big snow, snowstorm headed their way. I warn those people to get them prepared. If there's a snowstorm headed their way, causing white oak conditions and blowing and drifting snow during the summer months, I do my weather reports. Especially severe weather and hurricanes headed for the eastern United States. Make sure to have your shovels, sho 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 shovels ready. Make sure to have your snow, 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 snow plows ready. Saw, 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 saw trucks ready. There is a snowstorm heading your way. I do my weather reports to get to prepare. Especially snowstorms and blizzard conditions. Blizzard, 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 blizzard conditions. If it's a snowstorm heading your way. Especially in the, anywhere in Canada and the United States. Canada, Canada, United States. If there's a snowstorm heading your way, I warn those people to get them prepared. If you're with the boots, winter jackets, hats, gloves, and scarf, skis, pants is ready. Order, 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 order your pizzas. Order, order, order your Chinese food. Bye, 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 bye. Case, 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 case. Make sure to have your have your have your device device devices church. Make sure to be very careful driving the car so you don't get in a car accident, especially in the blizzard conditions during winter months. And have your fur 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 is ready. Fur 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 is snow 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 plow plow plows. Make sure to have your power, 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 power trucks ready, especially in the winter time. Wah, 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 wah. If it's a snowstorm hitting your way, make sure to have your sh 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 ready. Have 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 ready. Snow so 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 scoops ready. Snow plow 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 plows ready. Salt 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 trucks ready. Thanks for watching. I'm Frankie McDonald.